guys, my enthusiasm may have run away with me and uh, I must apologise for that because I did a thing without showing you a thing what I did. So I'm going to recreate the steps in the thing I did and then show you the thing I what I did done after that. So I've got these electric power drills and I've had these for ages. I've got like a couple of these and a load of batteries and I've had them for like over a decade and they are still going strong. You know, this is the original battery and I can kind of stop it now. It's starting to get a bit weak. But, you know, I'm pretty impressed. Well done, DeWalt. Uh, this is when I think DeWalt tools are worth buying. I don't know if they're still worth buying, but I'm very pleased. Have the later version of this, still fine. Using the same sort of battery pack. Um, but yeah, the battery packs are fading. Ah, Now they are still 40 quid though for a battery. And you know that you can buy all these sorts of various other sort of lithium cell battery packs and ones that I've messed with. And this one, which I shall show you in a moment. Um, and uh, they're way cheaper than like 40 quid. So I'm like, why the hell should I pay 40 quid for NICADs now? NICADs of all things, when uh, we should be uh, using lithium. And uh, I had a brainwave basically, and this video is the first part of that brainwave of me trying to work out a solution where I don't even need, I don't even want a battery charger anymore for my drill drivers. I just want a USB port on the back of the pack so I can just plug it into my phone charger as per every other device that exists now. So the only way to do that of course is to have a lithium cell in here. So what I noticed is I popped the lid and then all of a sudden all you've got inside these is a kind of warm actually, strangely, warm battery pack and let me just pop this out. Urgh. It is literally just batteries of this particular cell type and they're starting to look a bit crusty and I wonder if that is showing their age. And if you manhandle them enough, what I'm going to do, actually I'm going to leave this one, I'm not going to manhandle it anymore because I've got, here's one I prepared earlier. And you can see I've still kept the screws, so I don't want to lose any of the uh, goodness here, I just want to uh, reuse the plastic case. but. Oh, even this one's sort of jammed. Yeah, there you go. That's the pack. And this one was actually a bit juicy in the bottom, so that might be what's going on with the others. They sort of have weeped a little bit over the years, it seems. Very sad. So that's the actual battery cell in there, and I haven't really worked out what this is. It's a 14.4, and we've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve cells. So you can work that out. Doesn't really matter though at this point, does it? We're not we're definitely not going to use these anymore. So I'm going to cut these open. So I've got four of these batteries across two drills, and two are much older than the others, and they basically started to fail. So if we just take a voltmeter, and I do definitely have a voltmeter around here somewhere. Let's see if these cells have anything in them at all. I mean they this this was a charged cell when I took it off, but I remember the, the drill was just not happy with it. Um, yeah, look, nothing. It's not even registering anything. So if I just register across here. Ah, 11.8 volts there. And why is this cell registering so little? Makes me wonder if it was like one NAF cell there. No, it sort of seems to be going down. I'm not convinced there's that much current here. Yeah, look. Hardly anything. It's so weedy, so weedy. So there, that's definitely dead. And you can see them all there and they're all bonded together and that's going to go in the battery bank because you don't need that bit. So in order to try to make something a bit more interesting out of the housing, I took this housing and I basically dismantled, you see this top cell that's hanging, hanging here? I've dismantled that to take that bit out. And I came up with this. And it's little more than basically a wire hanging out the bottom. The black wire is the sort of ground or, or negative, however you want to look at it. And this wire is the positive. You can tell by it's got this longer tang. It's important to get those the right way around, I think. I'm not sure your drill will like the wrong way around. I've attached this sort of uh, cable to it, but it's actually really thin. You could see the gauge you kind of are looking at. Um, this is rated, where are we? doesn't quite say the gauge but probably I'd say it's at least double the thickness of this so when you're doing this properly you'll want to pimp that 
significantly. Um, and what, you, what I can do now is push that into there basically. And the idea is I can attach an external power source to try this just to see if the drill will do anything at the appropriate voltage. So I do have this, which is the car jump starter, which is in one of my other videos. Hopefully it has gone out before this video, but I can't guarantee it. And uh, I'm basically opening that, that engine start compartment, which will give me more or less a 14 volts out, I think. But we'll, we'll double check that. Remember, you want you want decent current here. Volts are good, but current is uh, equally as good, really. And that is current currently measuring 13.39 volts. So it's, it's as near enough as we want 14 volts. Let's see if I just turn that on. It should tell us how much charge is in it. it says it's happy. Fine. It does have a booster actually if you're using it on laptop and go up to 19 volts. Not needed right now. So I'm just going to attach the uh, big crocodile clips. So remember, these are for starting your car. Definitely have enough juice there. Oh, and the reason, by the way, is reading slightly lower. This is a diode pack, so that's going to be dropping probably uh, maybe 0.8 of a volt, 1.2 volt, something like that. So, yeah, it will be. if you wire it straight into a pack like that, it'd be much stronger. So that's into that pack now, and the moment of truth. Yeah! And that is full on, that is. I don't know if... I, mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm just tapping that. If you remember before, I could stop that, right? Now it's going to talk my hand off if I try to stop that. So I'm not going to... Well, maybe I will the ratchet. Yeah! That sounded significant. And let's see if we can compare that to the other one. If we can... In sound, at least in only in sound. can even fight it I can fight it on the bracket nothing nothing that is shockingly scary right listen to that one more time don't do this at home by the way I don't need to lose your hand Whoa, woof, woof. that is definitely Tim the tall man Taylor solution there so let's let's think about this logically though what is our next step so our next step really is to find something, uh, if you measure the uh, current on these things, two amp hours, right? If you get one of these, which is a sort of a, a bigger, one of the bigger batteries, this is a hundred, uh, 10,000 milliamp hours, and this one is a 13,000 milliamp hours. So you can see they're no, they're not really comparing. You can't, you're not comparing the capacity with these, but let's remember these are much faster to charge and far more convenient. If you're like me, your drill driver isn't in constant use. I'm not a decorator or something where I'm using them constantly, but I need them to be useful and ready to go when I need them. I think that the battery life charging characteristics of a lithium cell are gonna be much better than one of these, these NICADs. They don't like to be kept on trickle. I think they get a bit lame. They go, de you know, they die after a while. Whereas these, they don't have that memory. They can stay ready for action for far longer. Um, and not only that, conveniently, if you use these sorts of battery packs, they already have circuitry to prevent overcharging, over discharge, short circuit protection. So you've got everything you need in here, basically to protect your uh, device. Now, if you remember here, this was a battery module that I modified myself because it was kind of naff and broken, so I dismantled it. And that is basically a lithium battery here. And this is the PCB that controls its charging and discharging. And then you've got a charging port and you've got your, well, discharging port, your, you know, your um, peripheral port. So really, all you're doing for this is that you insert that USB there, you'll be wiring this into the PCB and you have a nice charging port with a micro USB. In order to though make the current you know that we need, we're gonna need though, I think four battery packs. Um you can hear my mental arithmetic going on. The battery packs are about 3.7 volts, so I think you're gonna need four of them really uh, in parallel to get what you what you need. Sorry, in series rather, to get what you need, which is around the 14.4. Um, so that does give you some challenge because you know this one is going to have a 3.7 volt pack that's being boosted, yeah? It's being boosted electronically to give the stable 5 volts that USB requires. This pack, for example, doesn't. It does, It well, I tell a lie, it does to some degree for this side of it. So it does give you a USB output and it does give you this variable laptop output. 
but the bit where it's on the car jump starting stage is wired directly into the battery in that right way that we that we need. So realistically, if you're going to dismantle something to fill one of these, it will ought to be one of these. Now the problem with using one of these battery banks, though, of course, they cost around thirty odd pounds minimum anyway, and that's the same cost of your NiCad cell. So what I would advise, and what I'm going to look for, is RC. You know the radio control car packs. I was uh, conversing with someone recently, please let me know who you were, <laughs> I do forget, I do apologise, and they were telling me all sorts of things about rechargeable cells and battery packs and how to wire them up, and I do believe the sort of model helicopter, radio control car uh, packs, they use them in lit different combinations and charge them in different ways, and there's a good chance we'll find something that will fit inside this enclosure. We need four cells that will fit inside this um, size box. Um, and ideally with its charging circuitry inside. But you've got a bit of room here, you could put the charging PCB up there if you had to. So I hope that's of uh, some use to you. If you've done this mod yourself, please let me know. If you've got a drill and you're happy to you know, run it with a, a small cable, a short cable to a belt clip attached, this is certainly a way you could do it. I mean, you could just do that if you're you know, want a cheapish battery. You know, you could buy a bunch of these batteries and just keep going. Um, technically, as I say, they don't have the capacity, but they might work better for you in the way they charge. Please let me know uh, how you get on with it. Please like, subscribe and share if you're that way inclined. If you hate the video, of course, hit that dislike. Uh, and uh, come over to Patreon sometime and have a look there. I do post a few free, free for everyone posts on there and have a look, see what's coming up in my future videos. As ever, thanks for watching.